Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. It is Thursday morning, and that means Mr. Jonathan Twomley is back. How you doing, sir? I'm doing well. This is the sleepy Jonathan Twomley today. <laughs> you're doing uh, great, man. You're, you're worried about a deal. You're up early, exciting. It's 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 all good, man. A lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Hey, so uh, we are about to roll into a new year, right? I actually just yesterday put out kind of my forecast for 2022. But again, in your amazing Facebook group, you put out a thought-provoking post that honestly I hadn't thought about before, and that is, where do you see the real estate market in two years, right? There's always next year and kind of long term, but there's very little talk about the midterm. So um, I thought we should talk about that. You can talk about multifamily and I'll talk about residential. Uh, so what uh, what are your thoughts? I mean, it's it's very hard to say, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's in the future and we have just so many different forces kind of at work mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is difficult to say. If you look at sort of like the current snapshot of, the supply demand dynamic in multifamily. It's very good for multifamily, right? Mm -hmm. We have a lot of household formation. The millennials are really coming into their, their prime household formation years. They need places to live. Houses are very expensive. They can't buy as many houses as they would like. Uh, and there's not, no other option but to rent in a mm -hmm. lot of markets, especially in markets where people are moving to uh, you know, rapidly like the Southeast. So. Okay. The, the dynamics are quite good, but it's but it's not. Uh, I want everybody to understand it's not limited to those markets. I mean, we have a housing shortage pretty much everywhere, uh, even even in some of the the slow go growing and even like negatively growing places. The the housing stock is 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 aging out faster than than the population is declining. So I've been hearing anecdotally about people. Uh, bringing apartments online in like very small towns and having waiting lists. I was talking to a guy oh, wow. at a party the other day who has property in like upstate New York. And he said he has, he just bought a new property. He has people, he's like a 30 person waiting list. Oh, wow. To rent apartments in this like three, three bed, this like three uh, unit place he has and in a small town. So this is happening everywhere. So if you just look at that snapshot, right, things are very good. And, uh, so I would, you know, most of the time you just say, well, things will just sort of continue the way they are. I think that's probably pretty likely. Okay. However, I do think um, that, you know, I don't think that the rent increases that people are getting right now are sustainable. No. Uh, when you're talking about, you know, sometimes 20% rent increases. A lot of this is just the bounce back from COVID when we had actual rent decreases and now things are coming roaring back. Uh, so they're they're catching up, right? Uh, so part of that, so you can't forecast those things into the future, okay. right? And, and nobody is. And if you look at, say, like a CoStar report, you know, CoStar is not forecasting these kind of rent increases. Well, let, let's uh, let's be clear. I think there's some syndicators that are forecasting them, but nobody with a, a real kind of view. Oh, yeah. oh, sure. Well, I mean, listen, I think there are some for some syndicators forecasting these because they have to. They have to, to exactly the number, make the, the numbers, numbers work. The numbers work based on what they're paying for their yeah, property. It's crazy right? deals but, I've seen the last month. Yeah, so there's some there's some crazy stuff happening. Um, it could, because there's this kind of mania about this fear of inflation, and everybody is driving people into buying uh, hard assets. Yeah, you know, which is what you want to do in, during an inflationary uh, period. But I mean, as we've talked about before, you know. This is only hyperinflation. No, six percent inflation is only hyperinflation if like you were like basically born in 2007, right? Yeah. I mean, like it's, it's not, yeah, this is, not this is basically like from 1945 until like 2005, this is kind of like what inflation was. It's sort of like three to 5% mm. all the time. And then sometimes get up to six. And so we've mm. actually had this in 1990, we had 6%. This is, so this is not, this is not the Latin American debt crisis. This is not Weimar Germany. No, none of none of, no, none of those things. Putting no. around wheelbarrows full of money yeah. uh, to pay for a loaf of bread. I mean, this is just just a different situation. Uh, right. But people are a lot of people are acting as it is, and there are a lot of people out there at their stoking panic for political reasons mm -hmm. about hyperinflation, which just just isn't hyperinflation. I mean, it's not no. even double. It's not even double digit inflation, right? So. Yeah. Uh, it's so, so, but anyway, it's driving a lot of people into the asset class and driving mm -hmm. cap rates way down. And when cap rates go down, you get 
uh, you're just adding more risk to your deal because you have less cushion. So I think that there's going to be some, there potentially could be some pain if people are underwriting to these huge rent numbers uh, in order to you know, justify buying deals at, at three caps. And if there's any kind of hiccup in the economy, or if there's, uh, if the inflation thing that a lot, you know, if everyone, if you're, let's put it this way, if your inflation predictions are correct, right? I mean, I'm not talking to you, Michael, I'm talking about the mm -hmm. people who are hysterical about it. The Fed is gonna step in and raise interest rates. And that is going to cause the economy to cool off a lot, which is gonna, you know, A, uh, lead to some job losses, which is gonna take some rent pressure off and B, cause mm -hmm. cap rates to rise, which is, so you're gonna get the double whammy of loss in value. And if you haven't locked in long-term debt, this is, this could be potentially a problem. So, yeah. uh, so I, I, I'm not making like a general prediction. I, is it up or down? I'm just, I think there's a lot of risks in the system mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I, I, I'd say we're kind of more like on a knife's edge. You could go either way, okay. but I, but I can't really say like, it's definitely going to be one or the other. Yeah. Um, yeah. So when I think about residential, I got kind of several notes that I think are pretty, I feel good about. Again, my crystal ball is as broken as everyone else's, uh, but here we go. So first off, I think Wall Street or kind of cash buyers are a bigger player in two years than they are today. Mm. Uh, for example, just the Q3 numbers just came out yesterday, reported on real deal. Uh, I think it was 18.2% of transactions, about 90,000 or so in the quarter were investors. 77% mm. of those were cash buyers. And that's up from a year ago, 11%. So about a 50% move. Uh, so I think investors uh, are a bigger part of it. Again, the, the risk adjusted return in single family is the highest of, of any asset, at least as of this year. So I think they're bigger next year. I think that's a safe bet. I think rates are higher, right? This morning, I think I saw them. They were at 3.27. Uh, I think they're higher two years from now. I think they're over four. Uh, again, 30-year owner rock, all of that. Uh, obviously, if that is true, uh, I think lower affordability. I think affordability is the biggest thing I track in housing. Uh, affordability is already um, reducing. I think it continues to, but obviously affordability is also made up of wages and wages are going up. So it won't, I don't think affordability goes down as most people think because they're all, most people when they think about affordability, they look at price and interest rate and they forget uh, wages. And again, mm -hmm. I learned that by studying the 70s. Uh, another thing is, I think but in two years, we are going to see the average new construction home be smaller. I think the, land, the era of the McMansions are over. I think we are going to see uh, the average new home be smaller, probably by 10%. Uh, again, we, we, have, um, you know, we need more units in, in some areas. Uh, I also think there's some new technology that maybe goes mainstream. This is probably my biggest reach. I would feel good about three or four years for this one. Is it the 3D printed home? Is it the tiny home? Is it the container home? What is it? Uh, I think, again, uh, there may be a new, it won't always be stick build for, for mm. single family homes. And then the final one is something I don't feel good about, but I do think it lands in two years. And that is the 40 year mortgage is now a, mm. a, a legitimate option, probably only for owner ox. I don't believe it will be for investors just yet. They will stick them with the 30 year. They want to give the owners a better chance. And again, if you go out another 120 months, makes the payment lower and people buy on payment, not on price. Uh, so when I think about single family, that's kind of my running list. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I mean, it's interesting you say that about the 40 year mortgage, right? Because I mean, first of all, it'll be self-defeating because then the price will just go up because the, the payment goes down. But, you know, there are Yep. At the height of the bubble in Japan, people were taking 100-year mortgages. Oh my goodness! I, in, 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 Swiss, in Switzerland, it's very like 80-year mortgages are basically like the standard. From what I understand, I, one of my best friends lives there. Wow, he's 80-year mortgage, which is just nuts, right? Oh yeah, so, it's like you, you uh, you're never going to pay that off. Yeah, and and like no wonder the price of housing is so steep in Switzerland, right? So, um, but we could see it. You know, we could see it coming here. Which is just we're just just going to make the problem worse. Worse. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I do think in two years, they will keep it separate. That's why it'll only be for owner occupants. They want to give them a fighting chance and yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. Investors will still be stuck with the 30 year, but that won't last. They'll eventually give the 40 year to investors, but I don't think that happens in two years. Also, I mean, a lot of investors will 
lie. I mean, you can yeah, of course. It, right? so, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, I'm like, gonna move into that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's hard for like you know BlackRock to lie about it, but you know, they're, for they're not getting a 30 year mortgage at least not day yeah, one. Yeah, you no, know, yeah. I mean, we could we could do it if mm-hmm. probably get away with it, but probably, uh, yeah. you know, it's. I mean, I think I think yeah. you're right. I think I think the the smaller home thing too. I mean, I think it's really got to happen, but. As we've talked about before, it's really dependent on zoning, right? I mean, if we if you can't get higher densities, then it you're not going to be able to build those smaller homes, right? Yeah, because it has to gotta, change, though. Yeah, mm-hmm. you've got to pay for these big lots. That adds to the price. You can't, you know, it just it, it just we just we have to get to, you know, smaller lot sizes. You know, back back to like you know two family houses. And mm-hmm. I mean, they don't even build those anymore, do they? But, but that's no. those. If you think about like what a great innovation the two-family house was, like specifically as an owner-occupied rental mm-hmm. to help you to help you yeah, cover absolutely. your, you know, I mean, this is like a really wonderful thing, and uh, they it's not not built anymore, right? So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, we'll get back to that. Well, that's very cool, Jonathan. This has been fun to think about. Again, something that uh, had not crossed my mind. So, thank you for putting it out on your Facebook group. How can people find you and find the group? Yeah, so the group is called the Multifamily Investment Community. So just search for it on Facebook and drop by and say hello. And uh, also just giving a little uh, heads up that I do have a multifamily deal I'm working on now. If you are an accredited investor, uh, you should reach out to me to learn more. Uh, you can get onto my list by Googling Two Bridges Asset Management LLC and fill out the investor form and be in touch. Very cool. Thanks, Jonathan. Yep.